In the previous video, we looked at how our microcontroller can interface with the external world and capture stimuli that are analog in nature, which is a very, for us, it's going to be a variable voltage. So now we're going to look at how our particular microcontroller, which is our TM4C, what hardware it has, what, what internal hardware it has and how we program it in order to do our capture operation. So we'll, we'll look at uh, our uh, ADC, uh, ADC in TM4C. First, uh, we'll get some, some basics about it. We'll look at the details of how it, uh, what are some of, the, uh, some of the features of it. Then we'll look at the setup. This is the one-time initialization. And then we'll look at the capture, how to capture a single sample, a single sample. That is, if I want to read an analog value, what do I do in order to, uh, what programming steps do I perform in order to capture a single sample? So, so let's first understand the basics of ADC on TM4C. You also, you already saw how uh, how analog to digital conversion works. Um, but first, uh, on our microcontroller, which is the TM4C, um, let's make some points about it. Um, there is an ADC, there are actually two ADC uh, uh, chips on it. There's an ADC 0 and an ADC 1. Uh, we will mainly be using ADC 0, the two separate uh, ADCs, uh, uh, hardware components that can, can be used for performing ADC. Our ADC is a 12-bit ADC. And which means our values that the analog value that you receive. So let's say this is your microcontroller and you're getting analog input. Let's call that V in, if you will, the V in. First thing that we see is that the V in, the reference voltage, the internal reference voltage, uh, reference voltage that we use is a 3.3 volts, uh, which means that I, it, it is, it is able to um, able to measure voltages between 0 and 3.3 volts and it's going to take that and whatever our ADC hardware is and we'll, we'll, I'm abstracting this now. So it takes this analog voltage which fluctuate, which varies between let's say 0 and 3.3 volts and converts it into a digital value. The digital value it converts, this digital value is a 12-bit value which means it has a uh, it has a, a range of 0 to 2 to the power of um, 12 uh, minus 1 so there's a total of uh, a total of 40 96 values that are possible levels if you will different levels that are possible um, so so in other words uh, so we can also say that our resolution Um, which is given by the formula range divided by precision a pre precision in terms of levels not in number of bits but in terms of levels uh, for us that's going to be 3.3 minus 0 divided by our precision which is 4096 which uh, if we do the math um, Let's do the math. That is 3.3 divided by 4096. So that's around uh, uh, 0.8. So let's uh, look at that in in millivolts. So that's around 0.8 millivolts. So it's approximately 0 0.8 millivolts. So that's the smallest change that are our uh, ADC can capture. Um, so the, the, the other thing that uh, we want to understand about our ADC is um, it has 
um, it has internally uh, a bunch so we program our ADC just like we program any other device so it has some device registers um, but more importantly our ADC has uh, the ability so on our, our microcontroller uh, we have 12 channels so in other words there are 12 pins on our so there are 12 channels and these channels are uh, called analog channels they call a in 0 through a in 11 and these channels are tied 12 channels are tied to pins actual ports port pins so for us those pins will uh, pins are let me just uh, try and put that here uh, our pins are i'm gonna blow this up a little bit so uh, channel one is pe2 channel two is pe1 channel three is pe4 so the the number next to this is the channel number and the pin corresponding pin so in in lab in our lab lab eight if you will um, in lab eight um, actually in which is our adc lab we will be using in the adc lab we will be using pd2 which is this guy right here which is channel channel five A in five. As it turns turns out, we we have been using uh, the channel four, which is PD three all along. This is what Texas Display was using. Uh, there are several examples in the book that use PE two. Um, it, it might be. Uh, uh, this might be something you might want to use uh, if you want to keep all of your inputs on one in, on one port. Uh, eventually, when you get to lab 10, you will put your buttons on PE0 and PE1 and you could put your analog input on PE2. So all your inputs are on one, uh, one, um, one port, but that's up to you. But I'm just highlighting the fact that that's there. Okay, And a lot of examples in the book uh, I'm going to make a note that a lot of examples in the book use these two um, as the are examples in the book. Yeah. So let's uh, let's uh, let's now see what the setup involves. So the one time initialization. Um, before I jump into the one time initialization, I uh, because the 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 code I can I can walk through the code and it can be pretty boring, but let me first highlight a few things about our ADC uh, so that so that the terminology I use will make sense. Uh, our our ADC has uh, has four sequencers. A sequencer is simply a, a, a circuit a hardware piece of hardware that does the actual conversion from analog to digital. There are four sequencers and they're called sequencers. Um, I'm gonna call them SEQ sequencer three, sequencer, uh, let me write them in the correct right order, zero, one, sequencer two, and sequencer three. Uh, this is the simplest and this is what we will be using in, in our, uh, our our system and the way we choose the sequencer will be based on a priority and we'll get to that in the in just a second so most of the time when i'm writing my code and i choose a sequencer and all of the settings i do are sequencer based the second thing that we have is a uh, ability to choose speed choose speed of conversion that is, when we think of our ADC conversion, and you re recall this from uh, from my, uh, just a second, you recall this from uh, this picture that we, we, John and I worked on in a previous video. So what this is doing is, you get an analog input, 
right this is your analog input and eventually this analog input is converted to a digital out so this is your digital out this is your v in that is your d out that's uh, what happens inside doesn't really matter but one of the things that we we can determine we can control is how much time what is the time that it takes for us to complete this conversion this delta t now if you if you del if you try to f try to uh, make this conversion really fast fast as in the fastest you can make it is 1 million conversions per second 1 million 1 megahertz so that is 1 million conversions per second that you're doing if you do it very fast uh, your delta t is small the delta fast means delta t is delta t is small but it has a consequence the consequence so the up is that you have you have speed the uh, the benefit is that you have speed but it comes at a consequence which is the sample you'll get which will be very imprecise and on the other end of the spectrum, we can make it very slow, the conversion itself very slow. And for us, slow is going to be 125 kilohertz. And 125 kilohertz, yes, it is the downside is it, it takes a lot of time for conversion. The upside is that the sample that you get is very precise. So we choose, depending upon the problem you're working on, if you need really fast sampling, you're going to sacrifice performance uh, precision but you can choose up to one megahertz so the the way we choose our speed is determined entirely by this table that we have here um, and and I'll, I'll walk you through this table as we go along but there is a register a device register called adc uh, zero because that's the uh, chip we're using uh, it's called the pcr register pc register um, this register chooses the speed. This is just how many samples we're taking. You put, uh, this is a 3-bit register and the 3-bit register can take values which are 1, 3, 5 and 7. If you put a 1, you take 125 kilohertz uh, or all the way up to 1 megahertz or 1 million samples per second. Uh, I'm using hertz as samples per second. Yeah. So, the other thing that we can do on our microcontroller, and again, I'm, this is conceptual, is we can, we can choose the trigger. And to choose the trigger, let me see which, oops. Uh, to choose the trigger, we will use, we will use uh, another register called the ADC Emux, and what the trigger basically is is when do we want to capture a signal, the uh, ca capture a sample. Um, in 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 our lab, in lab eight, we will be using uh, the software start because what we will do is we will we will sample on demand meaning that whenever the user wants whenever the software wants a sample it will initialize this initialize the conversion and wait for the conversion to complete and then grab the converted value and use it now the they can you can change the trigger um, in in when you get to lab 10 there are other ways to trigger you can use an external uh, external GPIO, you can use an, a comparator. A comparator is typically used when you want to um, say that I want to sample but I only want to grab the sample when a particular a threshold is crossed. So you can use an ex a, a comparator for that. Uh, you can use a PWM where on a rising edge or a falling edge you can grab a sample. You can also use a timer and the, 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 on the, uh, the extreme is where you continuously sample as fast as your um, as your sequencer can handle okay so these are some of the things that we will be looking we will be setting so now let's dive in and first i'm going to just give you an over just a dump of if you will the the registers that we have 
So these are all the registers. We'll come back to this picture as we go along. I'm going to just take a snapshot of this so that I can come back to this. Um, the registers that, that I already talked about are the, uh, the Emacs register, the SS pre-register, which is how I choose which sequencer I'm going to be selecting, and the uh, the register which has our um, which one is our uh, emux and pc register which these are the three registers we talked about we'll look at the other registers as we as we um, discuss our our one-time initialization so let's uh, let's look at our one-time initialization so i'm going to first show you the example the example i'm going to give you is uh, is uh, in the in the it will be in the ebook and the example i'm looking at is um, is the initialization and i'll highlight this this is channel 9 which is pe4 so the the, the font may not be clear here but but bear with me, it's it's just a matter of understanding what our steps are. So there are two parts to our initialization. The first part, this is channel 9 on PE4. This is A9 on PE4. In your lab, lab 8, you'll have to change this. Lab 8, you'll be doing channel 5 on on PD, that's the one that you facing in your. So started. So the first thing that we see there are some steps we have to perform, which are these five. They're to the total steps. The first five steps. Specific. And the next, the rest of the steps. C specific. So the should be obvious. To we have we are using port E pin four to uh, enable the clock, uh, make the direction input. Uh, here's an important step that we have done so far, which we have to make sure that we enable the alternate option on PE four. So far, we were only using. Digital, digital enable. I'm not going to do a digital enable because digital enable. So turn off digital, disable digital, and choose the alternate function. And alternate function by selecting this register called the cell register. Register. So we chose this is for PE four. So we we chose the alternate function. We disable. Remember the tilde here is telling disabling the. Uh, zero in that uh, bit so i'm disabling the uh, digital enable and i'm also enabling the this is the this is the analog modes register so i'm setting the analog mode to be uh, turned on so i'm did the analog mode so this is this is a subtle small difference between what you normally do because now we are doing uh, port specific initialization has to make sure that we um, we make an analog pin. We enable the analog pin. Enable analog pin uh, on whichever whichever channel you chose. So, so now we get to our ADC specific stuff. The ADC has an internal clock, just like port E has a clock. The ADC has a clock. So first thing we're gonna do is turn that clock on. Steps sticks. Step six turns the clock on and we stabilize. So this is as as before. We wait for some cycles. So these steps here are turn the clock on and wait for it to become stable. So we're just being extra cautious and waiting for four four instructions here. You don't need need to step wait for that long, but it's just a safe thing. So this is turn the clock on clock on the ADC clock on. And particularly the ADC uh, zero clock on. We turn the clock on. We start off by setting the speed. This is the this is the speed of conversion, which is simply configuring for 125k, which is the PCR register, 
we put a value of one um, remember that's one three five or seven we put a value of one because we want a 125k the next thing we're going to do is we're going to choose the sequencer the way we choose the sequencer is the SS, sspri register has a priority bit for priority for each register each of the sequencers so we're going to write to this register a 0011 which means that this is the priority of sequencer 0 sequencer 1 gets a priority which is 0010 which is 2 this is sequencer 1's priority sequencer 2 gets a priority of 0001 which is actually a priority of 1 and this guy gets a priority of 0000, which is sequencer 3. And sequencer 3 has a priority of 0 and priority here, a low value, low number is, is implies high priority. So this is the highest priority. That's how we, we chose the sequencer, which sequencer we are, we are going to be using. We chose the sequencer and while we are while we are setting it, we're going to keep this whole thing in an enable disable. So the activation register here, we will first disable the sequencer and we disable sequencer 3, which means that we write to this. Uh, so we start off by, by writing to the activation register a value of 0 in, this is, this is, three two one zero by writing a zero to that we have disabled sequencer and when we are done with everything we will enable it by writing a one to bit three so that's what this last step is but between these we're going to do some other manipulation one of the manipulation we're using is a is the software trigger which talked about this there are four values you can you can uh, sorry a four bit value that you can specify and the bit value is happens to be in this location so i'm setting it to a value of zero notice again there is a tilde here that tells me that i'm setting a zero in these bits so again uh, it, in this register your software trigger register which is your emux register we are writing a value so this is again there is more bits here and more bits here but i'm only looking at the 16th bit 15 to 12 bits 15 14 13 12 get a value of 0, 0, 0, 0 which means that i'm using a software trigger i set the software trigger now here is here is a important point so far all i did was set up the port e, set up port e do the sequence and nowhere did i tell the system that the adc is supposed to be getting its sample from channel channel 9 which happens to be our pe4 and this is our most important connecting step this step here is what tells the adc sequencer sequencer 3 which channel to get its sample from and it does that simply that is adc uh, there is a register called ss max 3 and in that register i'm going to write a value so it says and everything with zeros and i'm going to write the channel number so this is our channel number that's the most important thing here that's the channel number so the channel number is being in the ADC has been ADC sequence ADC zero sequencer three has been notified that what it's going to be grabbing from is channel nine, which happens to be connected to PE four. That is the that is the glue that ties the ADC and port port E. We're done with that. Um, we're going to set some other control uh, control uh, bits and the control bit that we are setting is here. It's called the SS control register and we are setting uh, in this register, we're setting a cup, uh, a few bits of interest and uh, there are really three bits that we are, we are mainly focusing on. Um, these are called uh, the 0110, which is a six. Uh, we're saying no temperature sense temperature sense is a zero uh, we're saying that we don't want uh, 
and this d0 uh, i'll tell we, we won't worry about that for now um, but what we what we are mainly telling the system is that we this one of these bits uh, which is our uh, end zero bit which is this guy right here this is our end zero bit and what the end zero bit is really telling us is that when a sample is convert con completed on sample completion I want you to inform me by set a flag and we'll see where that flag is going to be so that's what we're saying on sample completion set a flag and the other other one is simply saying that the other bit here is simply saying I want only one one sample because we can we'll see later on that we can actually get multiple samples but we're only going to get one sample at a time and when the one sample I want is 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 complete uh, is uh, is processed and converted to a digital value I want you to set a flag uh, we're not going to be using interrupt so we're going to turn off interrupt so that's our next step here this is disable ss3 interrupts and now we're ready to turn the the sequencer on and once we do this once we do this um, the the ADC is ready it doesn't mean that it's going to be grabbing samples because we chose a software trigger if we had chosen the continuous sampling it will be continuously sampling and giving us values but for now it is ready and ready for our for our instruction so so let's take a look at how we do ADC, how ADC captures data, captures samples. So we'll do just one sample and the code for it is pretty straightforward. Uh, we will be using a simple mechanism here and the mechanism we will be using is a busy weight mechanism. And you'll recall what busy weight is from a synchronization lecture that we had in the previous previous uh, 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 chapter. So here's the essence of our our um, oops, of our conversion. So the the way our conversion works so i so for example this routine is going to be called simply called adc zero in um, that's the name of the routine i i when i call this i will get back a number and this number will actually be a 12 bit result that i uh, the 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 uh, the adc returns to me by grabbing a particular value so we start the adc we to start the ADC we write a bit so again this is our PSSI register and we are writing a 1 to bit 3 and by say, by writing a 1 to bit 3 we are we're telling the sequencer 3 to start sampling sample conversion rather so it starts a sample conversion and because I asked it to set a flag, it's going to set a flag in this raw, uh, raw flag bit, which is RIS. So I'm going to check that bit. So there's an RIS in the RIS bit, this RIS bit, RIS register. Again, I'm going to check for sequencer because it's sequencer three. I'm going to check for this bit. If it is zero, it means that it is busy doing conversion that is it the conversion is not complete but so as long as it's busy i'm gonna just keep doing this this is my busy weight that we just talked about this is my busy weight and eventually when the conversion is complete and we have a digital out coming out of the dac chip that's when we if it is if it is one when this becomes a one when this goes to a one i hit this point so i come down then I should read the data. Um, the data itself is read from what is a buffer, a buffer. This is called a first in first out buffer. And we will read the value out of that register. So that register has, has, 
will hold the 12 bit number so i'm just being very cautious and just ending it with fffff so i get 12 bits of data out of it now the only thing i need to do is i need to make sure that the sequencer is aware that i've already consumed this data and i want to make sure that this flag is cleared and the way i clear that flag is i have a register here called the isc register and the act of writing uh, one in this bit which is again bit three if you will the act of writing a one here will make this guy go back to a zero again so that's what it's it's a clear it's a flag clear it will clear that bit so i cannot directly write to the ris uh, register if you will it's a device register you don't you're not really writing to it anyway but you can't directly manipulate this bit the only way only thing you can do is read it but to clear it you would write a one to this register act of writing one here clears that to be zero and then we return the data I hope this makes sense I know it's a long video but um, but the the important points that you need to look for is as you as you walk through and write this code ask yourself the more the important question how do any of these lines change how do these lines change for your lab which is using a in 5 on pd2 once you ask the if you understand this uh, these lines then you are uh, you're able to simply uh, change the appropriate um, commands appropriate registers here register values and 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 values uh, so that you can get your get your code to work for lab 8